This video is one in a series of technical tutorials produced by PlexTech RF Integration. Hello, welcome to our latest uh, in the video tutorials. This one is going to be on the design of a broadband frequency multiplier. It's going to be based on one of our previous door balance mixer designs. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so here's our um, frequency multiplier test bench. The multiplier symbol here, and it's a full harmonic balance simulation. So if we push into the multiplier, this is a uh, hierarchical design of what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to come in here and use a planar spiral ballon here to drive a quad diode bridge, which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. We're going to tap out here and through a marching ballon to give us our twice frequency output. We're going to be using the TriQuint uh, TQP13 process. So let's have a look at the uh, input ballon to begin with. So this is a full, fully EM simulated uh, S parameter block at the moment. Down here we have uh, the EM simulation, so the layout of the planar spiral ballon. Uh, now we discussed this in one of our previous tutorials uh, called the design of planar spiral balance. Uh, so if you look at that one, you'll be able to see uh, exactly how we design uh, the ballon. In a nutshell, we have the primary here, uh, open circuit at the other end, and we have uh, two secondaries, uh, short circuit at each end, and you can see the uh, reference planes and the ports for the EM simulation. Okay, here we have a full 3D uh, simulation, or view rather, of the ballon. So you can actually see the air bridges and the spirals, the underpass, uh, the ports themselves, and the through gallium arsenide substrate wires. Okay, back to our schematic. The output ballon. So this is essentially a very similar ballon, but twice the frequency, obviously. And what you find is the, the input ballon is it's a whole octave, it's 10 to 20 gigahertz. So we're going to need a 20 to 40 gigahertz output ballon. If you take the previous design, um, shrink it down to twice the frequency, it turns out to be a one turn or even less spiral, which is not particularly brilliant uh, in, its, in, in, in its simulation. So for this design, we're moving on to a more conventional planar march and design. Again, this has been discussed in one of our previous tutorials, this time on the Mimic Double Balance Mixer, one of our very early ones. But again, in a nutshell, we have a primary here, open circuit at this end, and we have two secondaries um, bridged across at various places. We're just using a single wire uh, to ground the, s the secondary in this case, uh, for space saving reasons, which we'll come on to later and essentially each one of these lengths is around lambda by 4 at the center frequency. And again we have the, uh, the 3D view so you can see where we're bridging across the VAR hole, the ports and the through substrate wires, uh, the underside. Okay, moving on to the diode bridge. A quad fet diode ring or a quad diode ring uh, will not work in, the, in a multiplier. It works fine in a door balance mixer and we need to do uh, a very subtle change to give us what we call a quad diode bridge. Now here's one I prepared earlier uh, to simplify the matters. So if we imagine uh, this is a quad diode ring for use in a mixer, so in up convert mode we have an RF out and an RF out bar and we have an LO drive and an LO bar and the diodes form a ring so you imagine the positive current goes this way flows around in a ring to turn this into a quad diode bridge we need to do two very subtle changes we need to basically spin around the two bottom diodes
So when we use this in the multiplayer, what we see is that the RF and the RF bar are the RF out of our multiplier. And the LO and the LO bar turn into our RF in and RF in bar ports. And this time we seem to have two halves of ring. So this way and then stop, this way and then stop. And that's the quad diode bridge. So I say, if you leave this as a quad diode ring and try and simulate it as a multiplayer, it won't work at all. Um, we get the bridge the right way around, half a ring, half a ring, defined from the RF output port, and then you can get some great results. So, pop out into our test bench, full harmonic balance. I'm gonna look, to begin with, at the center frequency. So this is a 10 to 20 gigahertz input. We're gonna look at 15 gigahertz, and we're going to sweep the RF input power to see what sort of conversion loss we can attain. So what we find is around 18 dBm input power, we have about 12 dB conversion loss. So less power than that, we have more loss. We gain a little by going up to about 20 dBm, but it's hardly worth it. I think, I think in this case, 18 dBm is about the ultimate power to use for, for our 12 dB conversion loss at the center frequency. So let's see what happens if we now turn off the uh, sweep of the power and just do a fixed um, simulation, 15 gigahertz plus 18 dBm. And let's have a look at the output spectrum. So, so this time we see, these, this will be the output spectrum as measured on the spectrum analyzer. So our 15 gigahertz signal is highly attenuated. Our 30 gig, gig signal is much bigger. So this is our uh, 12 dB conversion loss and the delta here is about 45 dBs. So the fundamental is well attenuated uh, in this design. So now what happens if we sweep if we now sweep the full frequency across the 10 to 20 gigahertz octave input What we see this time is our conversion loss. So essentially 12 dB, uh, but about a 3 dB slope across the whole band and plenty of fundamental rejection. Bags at the low frequency end, worst case about 47 dB at the 20 gigahertz. Now the beauty of this design is that it's an octave, which means we can have a 20 gigahertz input signal, but we can also have a 20 gigahertz output signal. Um, and the, the double balanced approach copes with this fine, where some single-ended multipliers just wouldn't be able to cope with uh, that much bandwidth. So we also have a version where we're going to put a buffer amplifier on the input so that the conversion loss isn't uh, anywhere near 12 dB. So let's have a look at the buffer that we could use, or a buffer that we could use. So. Here we have, again, a harmonic balance test bench for a buffer amplifier. So if we look in at the amplifier, what we're gonna use in this case for an octave bandwidth, we're gonna use a single stage device, which is basically gonna give us about 9 dB gain. So we take a fairly big transistor because we need to generate at least 18 dBm, of course, output power at 1 dB compression. So this is the TriQuint TQP13 process, which is essentially a enhancement process, we need to apply a gate source voltage of about plus 0.35 volts for peak GM. What we're actually going to do is we're going to apply a single plus 3.3 volt bias onto the drain. We're going to use self bias, so we're going to bias the source at around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts, which means we need a RF short and a bias resistor, and this is going to help with stability. We're going to use some inductive feedback here as well to also help with stability. And then we're going to need to apply a greater than plus 3.5, something like plus 0 0.55, 0 0.65 volts onto the gate. And we do that by dropping the 3.3 volt supply through a, an on-chip potential divider here. So we're going to do a feedback amplifier. So this is the feedback loop. Uh, essentially, we're going to uh, split our resistor into two halves, half of the resistor either side of the uh, required DC block, and the same with the frequency dependent part or the inductance of our loop. 
So uh, we, we look at the, uh, the core circuit on its own as a feedback amplifier and then we apply a reactive input match to help across the octave band and also a reactive output match and uh, all the necessary bias components here. So if we pop out and simulate this amplifier on its own, what we find is it's uh, unconditionally stable, K much greater than 1.2, 1.34 minimum across DC to 40 gigahertz uh, and indeed beyond. We have 20 dB matches, both input and output across the octave band. We have fairly flat gain uh, of about 9 dB. And importantly here, this is the harmonic balance uh, output power at 1 dB compression and it's always greater than 18 and a half dBm, so more than the 18 that we, that we require in 1 dB compression. So let's go back to our multiplier bench. So here's the uh, buffer amplifier which has been uh, shorted out for the previous simulation. Let's put that into circuit now. And what we need to do is halve the input power from 18 to about 9 because we have 9 dB gain in our amplifier. I'm going to put the history on and I'm going to re-sweep. So what we find is the conversion gain is reduced by 9 dB and it's a little bit less, it's a little bit flatter rather. Um, obviously we've degraded the fundamental ejection because we now put a gain block at the fundamental on, on the front of our multiplier but we're still getting at least 30 dB fundamental rejection, which is good. But I want to show you this, if we uh, again look at the output spectrum, again we have the fundamental well attenuated and the second harmonic breaking through. Notice that the delta is now 36 dB, it was 45 before, so this basically just differs by the gain of our gain block. So we haven't really degraded uh, the performance other than by the gain of the gain block. Interestingly, if we sweep the input power at a fixed frequency, the center frequency of uh, 15 gigahertz or here, and again, I have to remember to approximately halve the powers because of the gain block. What we find this time is it's much more obvious that plus 9 dBm is the power to use for our, for our buffered circuit. Okay, so essentially that's the simulation of uh, an octave bandwidth uh, doubler. We have uh, a full layout here. So this is basically uh, the multiplier without the buffer at the moment. We still need to lay out uh, the buffer amplifier. Here's a quad diode ring, um, say quad bridge. Uh, laid out as compactly as possible. Here's our half frequency or our fundamental input a planar spiral ballon and here's the uh, Marchand ballon at twice the input frequency. So ground signal output here and a ground signal input here. Okay so that essentially concludes uh, this talk on the uh, octave bandwidth uh, frequency multiplier. Uh, please visit uh, our website, plextechrfi.com, for many more video tutorials and white papers, and thanks for listening.